Hey everyone, I just want to demo a basic outline of the features in my adventure game framework. If we look at the hierarchy, we first have the level manager, which will load the framework, and it will also set the default state and the default character who we will be controlling, which is Amlet, right here. So. If we move down the hierarchy, we get to the rooms game object. Now under rooms is where we can have as many rooms as we want within the scene. So this first room is this test room. We have, if you look over here in the inspector, you have entry points and you can have as many entry points as you want and each entry point will have its own visual where you can just dry, drag around where you want the entry point to be. Uh, you can have a walk to point so they'll walk to that point after entering the room. Um, and then you can have sequences which will set up different environmental uh, changes when you enter or exit the room. You can also set the camera limits so if the room is smaller than uh, what's visible by the camera you can set where you want the camera to center itself to or um, if the camera is following the character you can set where the camera will uh, go to so if the camera reaches this point either on the top or right so the top right, the camera will stop there, and then over here, bottom left, the camera will stop there. Um, so those are just some of the options for uh, setting up a room. So then in a room you have objects. So in this room we have uh, one box, and then we have box two. Then you have backgrounds, and this we have one background. And backgrounds can be animated. You can have as many backgrounds as you want. Uh, you could have parallax backgrounds. Um, basically, whatever you put in this backgrounds object will be the background. Um, so characters are different characters, whether the human controls them or the AI controls them. They all show up here. Um, Polynav is the, currently I'm using a plugin for pathfinding, so that's where the pathfinding happens in this green outline here. Scale areas, um, currently this scale area is out of the scene, but you could drag it into the room. So a scale area is where the character will, or any object, will scale itself to a certain size based on the top and bottom of this area or the right and left. So right now, if the character was at the top, he would be 0.25 size. If he was at the bottom, he'd be 0.75 size. And it just, it'll, it'll scale the object to those sizes based on where they are in this uh, box. And it right now I have it as a polygon collider so you could make the uh, scale area however you want. You could just click and so this will be the scale area. You'd basically want to match it to whatever graphic is underneath it. So move that out of the way. And then we have triggers. So a trigger, there's many different kinds of triggers, but this one trigger here is a, uh, a room change trigger. So a room, over here you can see it in the inspector, a room transition trigger. So this will take us to a new room. And then there's an exit walk to point, so they'll walk to the exit point, and then the room will change.
So that's basically how uh, scenes are set up. And then we have the editors. So the adventure editors are, uh, so we have a state. So this sets the state of a scene. So you might want to have like first state, second state, third state. They can all happen um, throughout the game. We have the sequence editors. So the sequence sequences are the main uh, logic of the adventure framework. So anything you do in the adventure framework is driven by a sequence, which is a series of events or actions that take place in order. So first you choose a scene that you want to edit a sequence for, so we'll just use test scene. So if you wanted to fire your weapon at this box here, you might call this sequence fire at box. So we open fire a box, and then each of these is a sequence item or action item, and these are run in order, and you can either choose to yield to one, so you could yield to it, or it'll just run them and not care if how long each item takes, and it'll just kind of run on top of each other. Um, so just to it's a brief overview of different sequence items you could possibly do. So there's a move to point. So you type in the character name and he'll move to the local position within the room. You can face a certain direction at the end of the move. You can speak. So the character will speak uh, these words. And these are, this is all handled by a language system, which uh, you can swap out languages with ease. So you can choose what type of speech you want. You can choose a dialogue box, a narration box, or overhead. And those are different. And you can add different types of speak options. Um, this is a standard animation actions. So there's just a few uh, types of actions that happen over and over throughout a game you might put here. So you don't have to manually call each animation if it does the same thing over and over. So we call that one on uh, our character. And sprite options are different options you can perform on sprites. So for we want to choose box number two. Uh, we're going to yield while the fade happens. So we're going to fade out the sprite over two seconds. So that's just a general idea of how sequences work. Then we have an inventory. Uh, manager. So these are basically just all the inventory items in your game. You can search by uh, name. So if you just want to, if you know the name of the inventory, you can just go to it. Type blaster. Um, so basically, you would select the image. Uh, you can have a sequence run for the description sequence. So if you like examine the object while it's in your inventory, you would run a sequence to determine what is said or what is done when you examine that object. Um, then there's combinations. So here's one combination. So this is an empty blaster. Uh, when we combine it with the battery, we are going to run a certain sequence. So again, everything is tied back to the sequences. So if you try to combine blaster and uh, empty blaster and battery, you'll get a new item called blaster and it'll also have the option to run this sequence if you want otherwise it just makes the new item so that's the gist of the inventory uh, manager and then there's objects so objects in the scene so for instance this box number two is an object in the scene um, so if we want to edit box 2, we open box 2. So there's different interaction types. And you can add or remove them here. 
you can add look, talk, interact, use an inventory item, uh, use another object in the scene. You can scan. These are completely modifiable. You can add or remove any of these you want. Um, so I added look. So if you click the look icon on the box, it'll run this sequence called look at box. If you use an inventory item, if you use the blaster on the box, it'll run this sequence called fire at block or fire at box. So that's just a general idea of how objects work. Uh, variables. So variables, you have containers, which can be a scene name, can be global variables, can be anything you want. Um, generally, I keep them organized by scene name. So you have bool, int, float, string, vector2, vector3. You can access these variables in uh, sequences as conditions or and you can set them um, they can be used in the dialogue editor as conditions um, so they're very useful so the dialogue editor you can have collections generally a collection should be a scene and then you can add a dialogue and then the way dialogues work are if I open the dialog now that I organize them by pages so if we have page and you can call the page whatever you want usually a descriptive word is best and then you have nodes and these basically are the question items so the node ID sh should be unique so you can type whatever you want um, but generally it should be unique. So this is the display text. So this would be the text that shows up on screen as the question item. And now you can choose to go to run the dialog, which basically just runs a sequence. Again, going back to the sequences, so a sequence could just be a bunch of dialog being spoken in the dialog box or overhead text or anything. Or it could even run, if say you wanted to use this as a computer panel, you could just have the option show up um, and then run the sequence that they, the uh, options are supposed to run. It, so it doesn't quite have to be dialogue. Um, you could go to another page. So if you click that, it'll take you to another page and the pages show up here. So then conditions, uh, you can use variables to set conditions so you can check to see if a variable is true or false and that will decide whether this dialog option is shown you can also decide to show other nodes or hide question nodes if this option is clicked and all of this is saved um, and then actors, this is just all your actors for the dialogue area. And then these get, um, you would put their animations in the resources folder and they automatically, it will automatically use them. So if I go to act, resources, actors, I go to Emma, and then portrait, there's his uh, portrait animation so that's generally how the uh, adventure frame work is set I'll try to make another video going into uh, more details but for now I'll just show you quick what happens when you run uh, a simple sequence so I hit play we have our character you can walk around, he'll avoid objects. Um, let me see. Sorry, I forgot a setting. Okay, so he looks around. He can look at this uh, pop up box. 
is contextual. So as long as there's a uh, interactive object option for look, the look icon will appear. So he says it's a square box. Um, now you can have the regular Sierra um, interaction system if you want, but this is just how I run my games with this interactive system. So say I wanted to use the blaster, which shows up here in my inventory. You can examine, blaster, combine, cancel, but we're going to use it with the box. So we just click it, he goes over, he says take that, and then he shoots the box, the box disappears. And then if you wanted to see how the room transition works, you just when you hover your mouse over this trigger that was over here, he walks over, and then he appears in the new room. Now this room has scaling set up, so you can see the scaling. He gets bigger as he approaches the camera. As he gets far away, he gets smaller. Uh, so this is a general idea. Thanks.